Cool. Well, we're going to get started. So hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the Students of Dentistry and Pitt Dental Volunteers Around the World event for dental assisting. Um, great to have you. Uh, this is just an introduction of our team, uh, the interns on the right and the guys who founded Students of Dentistry on the left. Um, yep. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. Today's event is about dental assisting, as you know, so um, they're going to give a quick introduction, our speakers, and then we really encourage you guys to ask a lot of questions at the end, and we have some common questions that we might think help out as well. Um, take the floor. All right, so before we started answering questions, we wanted to make a very general slide of what um, general dentists or dental assistants are and what they do. So if you can move to the next slide. Um, okay, so basically dental assistants are healthcare workers that support dentists, however much in a practice, um, in a fast paced practice. Um, they actually, you know, provide a lot of assistance to them and they provide or they, pre they prepare um, patients per day, uh, like 15, however much um, for dental procedures. They record and update treatment information and patient charts. They sterilize um, and prepare instrument trays and all material for procedures to say the least. Yeah, and so a lot of us, we became assistants during our college careers. So for me personally, I found it through a Facebook uh, ad. You can go look, go look on Glassdoor or you can call or email your local dentist and you can start shadowing at that dentist and then you can ask if they need assistance. So what are the qualifications? Um, so the qualifications, range from practice and also what the state requires. So ch checking on website what that state's requirement is is important to find out what you need to do before becoming a dental assistant. All right, so um, when you're assisting chair side, you'll probably assist with a variety of procedures. Some of the simpler ones are like fillings and crown preps, and then there's also root canals, extractions, Invisalign implants and taking impressions. And then other than that, you do like front desk work, um, patient care and sterilization. Um, it's really cool because in different offices, you'll see different procedural things like the dentist I work for at school doesn't do root canals, but like every other dentist I've shadowed or um, worked for does. So it's cool how you like see different things in different offices and how after dental school, even if you don't specialize, you can still as a dentist, like go on and take like mini courses to be certified in things like Invisalign. Awesome, well, as I said, um, if you have any questions, please do ask, um, you can either just put them in the chat or you hit the raise your hand thing and we can call and you can just ask it out. Um, but to start, the first thing I'll ask is what was the most difficult aspect of assisting to actually get down for you guys? Yeah, I can go ahead and answer that. Um, I think the most difficult part for me was just trying to get familiarize myself with where everything is in the office because there's a lot of different materials and tools that you work with. So um, I know like when we didn't have patients, I would just go around and just start like opening cabinet drawers just to figure out where everything is um, and just trying to memorize everything that you need for the different procedures. Um, but the more you go in, the more you familiarize yourself with everything. And so it just becomes like muscle memory once you start doing everything enough times. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, learning where everything is at the beginning is a lot because like if you're in the middle of a procedure and the dentist asks you to go get something and like you don't know where it is, it's, it's kind of stressful. But um, other than that, I'd say just like getting adjusted to different styles. Like I started a new job at the beginning of the summer and the way he wanted his assistants to do things was very different. Like, for example, like when the dentist is drilling, you're gonna suction the water from the drill. And the way my dentist that I work for at school did it was like very different. Like he wanted us to hold two suctions at once. Then the other dentist wanted us to be like super close to the drill. So I guess like, that's a good part of being a dentist. You can do things how you want, but getting used to different styles is definitely a challenge. Um, I feel like to add on, for me, I work go to a I work at a big practice. So there's a total of six dentists that work there. 
um, and just knowing what the particular style for each dentist is, because that varies. Also, that comes from how they want their notes to be done for them when we do off and um, how quickly they run their page. So just getting used to each doctor's um, style is really important. Yeah, I'm just gonna echo to what everyone said. I work at a practice where there's two dentists. Um, it was initially owned by like the one named dentist, but he has an associate. And the new dentist is someone who just graduated from dental school last year. And I think the hardest thing for me was, like everyone said, just like being able to memorize each particular dentist's style and what they like, um, like specific instruments after each procedure. I mean, I know with like the new dentist, he seems to be more willing to try new instruments and styles on how to perform a crown or a filling. But I feel like with older dentists who have more experience, it's easier, it's easier to like memorize what they like because they've been doing it for so long. So, yeah. Awesome. Uh, thank you guys. To take a step back, um, I guess I'll ask what kind of qualifications were needed a, required by maybe your state, and then B, maybe what was required or looked for by the dentist that you ended up working for? Yeah, so for me, the for Pennsylvania dental assisting, um, we don't need to be x-ray certif certified, so I don't have that, but you get trained in office. So I was trained by another girl who had been working there for a really long time, so that is what how I grew accustomed to everything, so that was really nice. Um, and then like beforehand, I just shadowed at a lot of offices. So the dentist that I work for now, he thought that was like pretty good since I had a lot of shadowing hours in. So I was familiar with pretty much everything. Yeah, so Sarah and I worked at the same office in Pittsburgh and we were trained by the same person. Um, but in like, I live in Ohio right now, like that's where I'm from. So over here, I, you like, I don't think you have to be certified. Like you don't have to go to dental assisting school, but like they like very much prefer it. Like I had to apply to a lot of places. And then like, even when like I would go to the interview, they'd be like, oh, like you're not x-ray certified. Cause like the dentist we work for in Pittsburgh is like an older dentist. He likes to do things himself, but yeah, I like, I guess I just like got lucky and they were willing to like take me on and like teach me things. But like all the experience I got was like through, um, like just through working, but going to like dental assisting school is an option. Like, honestly, like if I, if I could do it again, like if I was a freshman, I would probably like do dental assisting school, like the summer before college or something, just cause it's like kind of hard to like get lucky and find a dentist who's willing to train you. But that's just my take on it because you could do it either way. No, yeah, I totally agree with Unity. I mean, even though Pennsylvania doesn't have a requirement for you to be certified, I mean, this whole, I'm an upcoming senior and my whole so or junior year was me like applying through Indeed and Glassdoor and just like calling all my local dentists at Pitt. Um, if I could like dental assist for them. And I literally got so many no's. I only got like one interview and I didn't get it because I just wasn't qualified. But I think coming with it, I think like luck has such a big um, role in becoming a dental assistant. I remember um, getting my dental assistant job today by, well, I didn't even come in as a dental assistant. I called the place asking to shadow. And when I came in, they were really nice to me. Um, but I guess something they liked about me that like, I guess I just asked a lot of questions and I hated being in like, it's so awkward shadowing. Like, I feel like everyone understands, like you just like stand there and just like listen to the dentist talk to their friends. And I just didn't do that. I just like followed the dental assistant and like asked her around. So the next day I came to shadow, they're like, do you want a dental assist? I think it was because I was just like really motivated and just wanted to learn more instead of sitting around. I don't know. I think that's a qualification. I also understand it comes with luck as well. So yeah, I do recommend to like be certified because I don't think it's that easy to get a dental assistant job, so. Um, for me, I work in North Carolina, so you do need to have certifications and qualifications prior. Um, for a big thing is the practice I do certifies us for DA1, which is the base level dental assistant. Um, if I wanted to be a higher level, then I'd have to do outside courses. Also, if I were to do, um, since I assist when we do anesthesiology, we have to be CPR certified just in case something goes wrong. 
And then I also have to be X right certified. And I go to um, the College of, uh, I go to East Carolina University. So I just did my certification program through the college just to get a one up when it comes to dental application. But um, you can do it through, there's many programs out there that offer it. So I have my certification and X ray and then CPR. And then I just am qualified through my job. Awesome. Um, I think Jada touched on it a bit with her answer, but how were you guys able to go about finding dental assistant jobs? Yeah, so I was really lucky. I joined the like Pitt Dental Science Club and one of the girls who currently worked at the office that I work at now, she posted that the dentist was looking to hire more dental assistants. So that's one thing I really recommend is just trying to be active in your like dental clubs so that if you have people that are currently working there and their dentist is hiring other people, then you can kind of get a leg up just because you know um, there's an opening there. Um, so that was really helpful for me. So I definitely recommend doing that. Yeah, like me and Sarah worked at the same place. Like I said, um, the girl who trained us, me and her were in the same sorority. So she just like reached out to me and asked if I was interested. And then I interviewed and then I got it. Um, but other than that, my job at home, like I had to apply to like a lot of places, like not to discourage you guys, but like on Indeed and Glassdoor, like I would like apply to like anything. Like I don't even know like how many places I sent my resume to. And like most of them like wouldn't even like contact me back because like I wasn't like certified and like they want someone certified because like, yeah. But I just, I just got lucky and that's how I got it. But I would say, um, stay in touch with upper class, like upper class people and like shadow at your school's dental school, because that's how I like learned the most. Like, that's like, that's where I learned the information that like I applied to assisting. And if those dentists that teach have practices, they're a lot more willing to take on students because they like get it. Like, um, professors are more likely to take you on than like just like a dentist in private practice who's not really in academia. So yeah, connections. Yeah, I know connection sounds like a really scary word, but I'm going to say connections. I'm also going to say just be willing to talk to anyone and everyone, you know, like an interesting person is an interested person. That's a lyric from like one of my favorite songs, LOL. But um, I think it really applies though, because <laughs> Funny story, I might get a second, a like a dental assistant job today because I like moved to a new neighborhood a year ago and I just met like a new neighbor like a week ago. We had a really long conversation and she asked what I study and I was like on pre-dental. So she then told my other neighbor who has a dental, like a daughter who's a dentist. And so he reached out to me today. I was just in my driveway and he was like, I heard your pre-dental, send me your resume. I'm going to send my daughter um your like your information and she seems interested so with that being said like even with my previous example of how I got my job now um like I feel like connection sounds like a really scary word but it really just means like be be able to like you should be able to talk to new people and like really be interested in what they are like what they're interested in and like people will automatically like reciprocate they're interested in you so yeah I mean be confident in who you are and really just like own that you're pre-dental so that other people will have confidence in your abilities. Um, so I'm just gonna basically say the same thing, um, connections and the ability to talk to people. So the place where I work now is actually my pediatric dentist. Um, I really wanted to work there and I was talking to the dental assistant, just explaining to her like what my goal in life is. And we found out that with our sorority connections, she was were considered sisters in the sorority world and she's like oh for a sister I'll give you a job here and so I got a job and I'm really thankful for it and now I work there non-stop and we have a um, ortho bay so I help out on ortho day so it's a good experience but just connections and talking to people Awesome. Um, so since you guys have been in dental offices, what has been the most memorable or I guess for lack of a better term, the coolest thing that you've seen or been able to observe? My favorite thing in the world is extractions just because I like setting those up and I like um, that there's kind of like a different, like it's just, it's not like a normal procedure. You always have to go about it in doing it differently. So like, it's not just like, I don't know, you do a filling and that takes like 
15 minutes. The extractions, at least for us, they take a long time because he doesn't use any anesthesia. He just uses the Novocaine. Um, so they usually take like two hours. So you're like standing on your feet, but it's just like a high intensity thing. And I kind of like that. You kind of get an adrenaline rush going through it. So the dentist we work for, me and Nitty work for, um, it's a uh, prosthodontist. So we do get some older patients, but we do bring, have some kids or some kids who come in whose parents um, go there. So we've done like, at least I've done some extractions on some kids before and like, you just have to calm them. And I, I enjoy doing that because I like working with kids. So just trying to like, interact with different people and doing the extractions is fun just making sure everyone feels comfortable um before they go in I, I really enjoy doing that so that's a good one I don't I think my favorite procedure right now would be crown preps just because the dentist I work for right now she has a like a Sarek machine basically like so normal dentists will like um they'll prep the crown they'll drill the teeth they'll prep the crown and then they'll send out like the impression to a lab um, for like a permanent crown and like the temporary crown will sit for like two weeks but she has like a machine which is like huge and it makes a crown like she designs it on a screen so I think that's really cool how she does that herself that's why I like that but other than that she also does a little bit of ortho and I like doing the wires that's fun and putting the rubber bands on the brackets that's fun too I can't even like pick or choose my favorite aspect of dental assisting. I literally love every aspect of it. I know that sounds so geeky. I never thought I'd say that. Like I like working because I don't like working, but dental assisting is so cool to me because you get to meet new people like every single day. So many people, I can't even imagine, like I can't even like recall the instances, the many instances I have just like with very unique people, very interesting, good and bad. But I feel like that they make you a stronger person at the end of the day. Um, clinical experience. I feel like everything is so cool. I mean, you can do like 10 fillings a day, but they're all different. I mean, you know, they're like different, like you, you can do like a DO, an MO, I don't know, like different surfaces. Like, I don't know. I feel like every aspect of dental assisting is so cool because everything is so individualized. Like that's the beauty of it, you know? Um, and yeah, you learn, like, I don't know. I didn't think really interesting. Like I, this whole past year of COVID, like I didn't work as a dental assistant or I didn't shadow and I didn't really have many like much clinical experience. And I was feeling so unmotivated and just so detached from the dental career, but working as a dental assistant or working in a dental assist, like a dental office at all um, really does open your eyes to just real life dentistry. And um, yeah, I love everything about it. Um, my favorite thing is being on call so our office um, offers an emergency line. So I think the best, the, it's really sad, but it was a cool experience to be a part of. A kid was diving off um, a diving board, completely missed it, went straight into the cement and front four teeth were just gone. Uh, and it was midnight and I got the call to come in. So I drove there and I helped out. And it was a really cool experience because the kid's obviously super stressed and you can see how the doctor works in that situation. And I had to help the mom calm down because she also stressed and help the kid, help the um, dentist. So there's a lot of going on and just finding, just finding your like moment and like taking deep breath, but like also doing what you need to do. So it was a cool experience and I hope to do more of that, but like also it's super sad that had to happen, but it's really cool when that happens. Wow. Yeah, that is, that seems really cool. Um, this next question, I guess I'll point away because I don't think it'll apply to her, but Jada, I don't know if you're gonna be able to answer it. Um, but for introverts, how do you, or do you guys have any advice for how they can interact with patients um, or the doctor just not being awkward or making small talk? Any advice on that? Yeah, I feel like I'm normally a pretty quiet person. So like the first like week or so, it was a little awkward. Honestly, you just kind of talk about the weather. Pittsburgh has some pretty not good weather. So there's a lot to talk about there. It changes. So it's like 80 degrees. And then the next day it's like snowing. Um, I think we got like snow in April. So that was a big topic that came up a lot. But otherwise, um, you just kind of listen to what they say. Usually they'll talk about something in their life. Um, and then you just kind of grasp onto that. So if they'll talk about their kids, you just ask like where they go to school, what their kids like to study or whatever. Um, I, the thing that our dentist does um, is he plays like music video videos 
on his little TV that he has in each operatory room. So that's another big thing is I like music. So I talk about music a lot with the patients. Um, so you're just trying to find some common ground, but you get used to it once you keep doing it. So. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I wouldn't say I'm a quiet person. I talk a lot, but um, at the dentist, Sarah and I both work at, um, since he's a prosthodontist, he goes back to his lab a lot. So like he wants us to sit there and talk to the patients. Most offices aren't like that. Like even for like, like when you numb the patient, you have to wait five minutes. Like then you'll like leave and go sterilize or something. But at the office me and Sarah work at, he wants us to like sit down and talk to the patients. So I think doing that, like I've learned a lot on how to just interact with people. And I like talking to people. I think it's fun. Um, some people are definitely hard to talk to, but if you let them talk about themselves, they're like usually keep going and you can just like piggyback off that. So that's my biggest piece of advice. Honestly, I'm not that talkative in like the dental aspect. I mean, yeah, I don't, I'm really not that talkative just because like, especially when they ask questions and the dentist isn't there, like when I bring them back into the room, I'll ask like, oh, how are you? And then like, that's really it. Um, I really do, do, I don't think it's like an issue that introverts want to be dentists. I feel like they're, given my experience, my dentist, the one that I work for is actually really chill and he like does not talk that much. Um, and I think a lot of people find comfort in that. Uh, that's the reason why I don't talk a lot unless they really initiate something because I didn't know people actually have dental phobias, like phobias of going to the dentist and like they have to take, like they have to pre-medicate. And so Sometimes I feel like I don't, I just won't talk unless they kind of initiate it because I don't really know how people are feeling. And I think that works out. And like, you know, I'm not like shy. It's just, I will not talk unless you really want to talk, so. For me, I feel like talking is like one of the most important part of my job since I work with kids. You can't leave a kid by themselves. Um, if you do that, bad things will happen. So you have to sit with the kid the whole time. And I feel like the kid gets more stressed when you're just sitting there in silence. So I have to make small talk. Luckily, just finding a common ground. And for me, I use like TikTok to figure out what the latest trend is for that age group. I know that sounds really dumb. Our, my dentist even does it. He downloaded the app to keep up with the trends. Um, and he's, he's old. <laughs> he's like, I don't know why I have this app, but it really does keep you up to date with what the trends are for the kids and you can find a common ground and from there start a conversation. So for the boys, I'll talk about video games. For the girls, I'll talk about the dance videos and they seem to line um, up and not be so stressed. So that really does help the dentist once he comes in and does his checkout or if we're doing an op. And that's just my big advice is just finding a common ground for each individual and might be different it obviously will be different but keeping yourself well first and whatever your patients would be also before i move on to the next question i mean everyone knows that people like love talking about themselves so if you are an introvert it's really not a big deal just like ask a question and then they will go on if you don't say anything else like just like hearing the dental hygienist across the room like they can go on and on about themselves and the patient will just be sitting there and they'll just keep going on and on so yeah you got it. It's not that deep. Yeah, though I'm not a speaker and I also asked the question, I'm going to add an answer. Um, I wore crazy socks <clears throat> every day I worked and then I struck up a conversation about that, especially when I was in peds with the little kids. I'd be like, oh, do you like tacos? Or do you like fish? And that always worked really well if anybody ever wanted to try that out. <laughs> All right then, so then our next question is, how do you balance um, dental assisting and school during undergrad when the semester is going on? Yeah, so this past year, I've been working as a dental assistant during my basically my junior year. Um, and so we're really lucky in the fact that our hours are pretty flexible. So we basically just give um, his secretary our schedule and she kind of works around that, which is really nice. But I'm very... I always make a schedule of everything I have to do um, and school wise. So like any subject that I have, I always mark off like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever. Um, so I always like have that schedule laid out. So once I have that, then I can like allot my time. And then I say, okay, this is the hours I'm gonna do school work. And these are the hours that I'm gonna go to actual dental assisting and do my job. So that's really nice. Um, and I do know uh, at least um, where we work, it's not a very high volume um, 
office. So we do get a little bit of downtime. So sometimes I just like bring my laptop and if we're not doing anything, I do some schoolwork there too, which is nice. So I think it just, just really depends on the office that you are shadowing or working at. Yeah, so for in Pittsburgh, it's like the same thing. Um, since my classes were online, it was like a billion times easier because a lot of them are asynchronous and like I could like work whenever they needed me to basically. But um, next semester, I know it'll be kind of tough because like I think I'm gonna have to like come in in the morning and then go to class and come back. So that I'll have to figure out. But honestly, it's just like time management. Like, it's just like another priority that you have to make time in your schedule for. But as long as you stay organized on top of your assignments, it's very doable. As long as you're not working like full time. I don't know how people work full time and go to school full time, but yeah. I mean, yeah, I have like almost the same experience. I didn't work throughout like this normal school year, but as a dental assistant now I'm taking summer classes and I will be taking summer classes throughout the whole summer in addition to working. And given my experience so far, I mean, like it's not that easy because they are six week courses and like a, like two days out of the week I have like, I'm from, I'm at work from like eight, my whole like work and school days, it starts from eight to nine. So I go like right to sleep right after. Um, but I, I don't know, I feel like, in my experience, when I only had school and no work, I kind of just like hyper fixated on school unnecessarily, like irrationally. Um, but I feel like having a second priority kind of helps me time manage, like Nadine and Sarah said. It's something that, I mean, I feel like if you're pre-dental, you'll probably enjoy dental assisting. I really do look forward to dental assisting. It's kind of like a break from school. Um, yeah, I mean, I hope you guys don't consider it like a work, piece of work. I really do like dental assisting and I think it's like a really good break from school personally. And you get paid for it. So that's a bonus. So this doesn't really apply to me. I don't work while at school um, due to I'm on the scholarship program. So we have to have another job instead. But with that job, um, you just have to find a balance and be open with whoever your employer is and be like, okay, this is what my class schedule is. If I have an exam coming up, I'm going to be like, I need this day off just so I can be able to study and giving them a heads up. And they'll be really, they'll, they'll work with you because they understand um, where you're coming from because they've been in your position, but just keeping that in mind and organizing your schedule and use a planner. That's really helpful. Oh, yeah. Those are all really helpful. Um, kind of switching gears a lot here. Have you guys been able to see the business aspect of dentistry while assisting at all? I've seen a little bit of a little bit of it. Um, when his secretary isn't there um, as assistants, we kind of take care of the front of the office. So we file charts, we call patients and schedule. Um, I haven't really seen any of like the filing insurance parts of it yet, which I probably would be good to know. Um, when you open your own practice but you get a little bit of just like organizing schedules and stuff so that's been good and then we also have to like um like refill materials so like if anything's running low we have to fill it out in this booklet and then just keep everything up to date yeah same thing what sarah said um since the practice i work at now is like a little bit bigger um i definitely like see more I would say, but still, I don't really know much about like insurance or anything. I wish I did. I just know that like insurance companies are like a pain to deal with. And like, sometimes they won't like cover what they said they would or like, like they'll think like the, the doctor will recommend something, but the insurance company won't cover it. So the patient can't afford it and just like all that kind of stuff. But other than that, that's about it. Yeah, I don't know much either. I mean, the first day I like went to shadow my dentist, like basically told me everything about, not everything, but he works for like corporate. He, I mean, he started off, he opened his like, his family dentistry office for 30 years. And then he had his business like bought out by Heartland Dentistry. And he told me like, when you work for a corporate, um, like an office like that, they, he really likes it. in the fact that like, he doesn't really have to worry about salary and paying people. He also has like full autonomy over what he does. Um, something that he says about corporate life is that it's really nice that 
because like Nitty, you mentioned this before, but like general dentists are actually, they're so capable of doing so many things, especially if they get certifications, like extra certifications, like Invisalign, oral, I don't know. There's a lot of courses you can take to become more certified in other aspects of dentistry. And that's what my dentist does. And he gets it paid. So like whenever he goes to like attend a course or like goes to conferences, his, um, the corporation pays for all of the expenses. Um, yeah, I don't know if this is like a false misconception. I don't know, but he, I know that like a lot of people don't like corporate because you have to keep up a quota of how many procedures you do. It seems like my, my dentist does not care about that. Maybe it's because he already has been like running his show for 30 um, years and he has so many patients every day. So he doesn't have to worry about meeting a quota, but, um, yeah, other than that, I really don't know much. So I work a lot with insurance companies. Um, so big thing is uh, I am able, you have to call them and they're, when you're on that call with that insurance company, it's maybe it can be 15 minutes, it can be an hour and you have to just sit there and figure out everything they'll prove prior. So we don't run into the problem later that we thought they'll be fine for something. And in reality, the insurance company is not gonna approve it. Approve it. Um, if we have that risk that the insurance company won't approve it, our doctor will either say we won't need it or he'll do a no charge. So he'll, the practice will cover it. And another big thing for practices, if they're not a corporate practice, if they're like privatized, they have to work with insurance companies. So those patients are allowed to go to this practice. So that means keeping their prices at a reasonable rate so that insurance companies will send their patients there. Um, have you guys had any moment, I know we're all in undergrad, any of those kind of moments where you have had like a, oh, I'm a working professional right now. Um, like something happened in the office, you had to spring in a duty. I know Carolina, you talked about being on call, um, anything like that. Yeah, I think kind of similar to Carolina's, but, um, I had to come in like a couple weekend nights, um, and it was like close to our finals. So I was like, okay, this kind of has to come first working there. And then I'll worry about finals later. So you just worry about those during the day. And then you do work at night. Um, I feel like that's really the only thing so far for me. But if anyone else has any other examples. I really have not been on call sometimes um, in the office Sarah and I work at. They'll be like, oh, like, can you work tomorrow or like something like that? But like, they're like very understanding, like if you have like school and stuff. But yeah, that's, that's about it. I don't know. I feel like every day, I mean, I haven't had like any extreme cases. Like I've never been on call, but I feel like coming into work every day is like, like a professional experience just because, I mean, even though you're a dental assistant, you're providing care to people, you know, you're hopefully, I mean, I've talked to a lot of people who had like anxiety before the dentist came in and I just like talked to them about it. I had this one guy, he didn't like admit to me that he had a phobia of dentists and he didn't pre-medicate. And so like five minutes for five minutes, he was like, he was like, can you get me like a cold rack? Can I have like water, please, please, please. And I was like, are you okay? He didn't, say, but he like threw up and I had to help him. Um, anyway, yeah, I feel like every day, like with everyone you're talking to, it's, it's just, you're meeting like the whole world. you're not meeting the whole world but it's just like small world and I don't know yeah um other than on call I think I started working in peak of COVID so it was a really cool experience to when you're driving on the road no one's on the road no one was leaving their homes except other healthcare workers so you could see in the cars everyone in their scrubs or if they're in a job that has to still run. And it was a really cool experience to see this community of workers who still have to work during this, um, during the virus and just going to work and seeing my coworkers. And that's when I knew I was part of something. And that's why I fell in love with my practice because I worked during a pandemic there and it grew like the bonds with everyone closer. All right, thank you. So we have a question, or we have two questions in the chat now. I'll read the first one. Um, how long did it take you all to get trained when you started? Yeah, so when I first started, I only went in like once a week and it was for maybe like four hours. So I would just go in once a week for four hours to actually get trained. And it took me like two weeks to just get the hang of everything. And then after that, I started working. So um, it's a little intimidating at first when you're first there and you're just having all this stuff kind of thrown at you. Um, but 
I will say the more practice I got with my actual hands, the better I got. So it's one thing for like the girl you're working with or whatever, and she'll like tell you how things go. And that's great. But for me, I'm very like a hands-on learner. So it was better once I actually started being able to do them. And then like, she could talk me through it once I was doing it. Um, so that helped me a lot. And that's what really like solidified everything that I was doing. Yeah, same here. I definitely have to like do things to learn, like, especially like with the suction, like it's a strong suction and it like can take over your whole body. So like, you really have to like learn how to control it. Um, but other than that, like, honestly, you're like always learning, like you're always going to learn new things. Like you're going to find rare cases once in a while. So I wouldn't say you're ever, you're like ever going to know everything. So you just have to like, kind of be willing to learn. It's the biggest thing. Yeah, I totally agree. I was going to say, I feel like I'm still learning, but I didn't want to scare you guys. But no, I, when I first started because like training, I feel like I'm still training. I'm never going to stop training, but the first few weeks, like first two weeks is so intense for me. I mean, cause once you're like a new dental assistant, you can't really have as much on, like on, on hand experience. You're kind of just following the other dental assistant, listening to everything. They're like farting in your face, but, and you're just like trying to like repeat them at like you know repeat after them so you can try to like memorize it um I totally understand I feel like you actually um just over time you actually gain experience I mean I remember I hated doing crown preps or assisting crown preps because I was so scared that I didn't know them but you really do just have to get yourself out there and then just like be willing to mess up because I've done that before um yeah I feel like I'm always learning whenever the dentist is like oh get me a new instrument I'm like I don't like a hemostat I learned that like two weeks ago I was like what is it what is that um but yeah you just learn as you go and people know that you're a student so it's okay um so I was started working during coronavirus I didn't really have time to be trained so I think learning doctor's notes I was given like two days to pick it up and start going um x-rays they're like, you, you took the course, you got it. And they just threw me in. Um, sterilization, I had like two days to learn. And like recently we didn't have someone there to make retainers. So it's D-band day, which means everyone's braces are coming off. We're making, normally on D-band day, we are making around 50 retainers. So not like individuals, not top and bottom, depending. So like 50 in total. So um, our lab technician was like, okay, time to learn. And I was like, oh, do I get a practice? He's like, no, these are real molds, don't mess up. So I got thrown in right away. It's a great experience. I love it. Um, that's where you feel that kind of like that pressure, but I love that feeling. So it drives me forward. And I knew that if I messed up and at the end of the day, no one's gonna be upset because I have no training, but they, they give you this pressure feeling and make you like work harder and be more do you like be perfect, but everyone expects you to mess up here and there. So it's okay. Just, you're always learning. Yeah, I was just gonna say, cause I also like um, ortho assist. I like the very first DSM scan I did on a patient was like, well, I didn't get a practice around there. Like, do you wanna do it? I was like, sure. And then it was that like right away. So yeah. Um, so then our next chat question is, um, I'm not sure if this has already been answered, but when during undergrad is the best time to apply and actually work as a dental assistant? Is it more long-term or can it be over the summer? So I uh, started my junior year, but there is currently a girl in our office who was a freshman when she, when she first started. And honestly, I wish I'd started earlier because I feel like that would just give me like um, more experience, um, more hand-on experience, just more time to just get accustomed to everything, which would have been really nice. But at least I have, you know, two years I'm going to go in um, knowing everything. So I'll be a little bit more prepared for dental school, which would be nice. But honestly, like the earlier, the better, in my opinion, because you get the most experience then. Um, but if you have to do it later, that's cool too. Like I, like I said, I'm getting a lot of experience that I, um, I'm getting more experience now working as a dental assistant than just shadowing. So whenever you can, whatever experience you get, it's awesome. So. Yeah, same. I also started at the beginning of my junior year, but I wish I started earlier. It's really hard to start like assisting at all. Cause like I said, like most people want like a certified assistant, like they don't have time to train you like, but yeah, like as soon as you can, if, um, I, I think I already said this, I'm like getting deja vu, but I think like if I could do it again, like 
I would try to go to dental assisting school the summer before freshman year college. Also like have fun because like you just graduated, but like, yeah, I like, I kind of wish I did that because I feel like it would have opened a lot of doors for me. And like, it would have been a lot easier for me to find a job. But I think there's some online courses for that. They're pretty expensive, but I don't know if it's like, if you're really into it, I would recommend it. Yeah, I mean, like everyone said, you should definitely try to start as early as you can whenever you can. But given how hard it is to start dental assisting, I I feel like given my own experience, it's easier to find a dental assistant job in the summer at home because I mean, when you're on a college campus, I mean, there's people study like pre-med, pre-dental, pre-everything. And like, you're gonna want to, there's like pre-dental kids everywhere, like looking for the same job at the same local dental offices. So I think there's more options when you go back home and find a local dental assistant job you can find. Just to go off what Jada said really quick. Um, I do agree with that to an extent, but- I was really gonna say, not yet. <laughs> so for me, it was nice. yeah. because um a lot of people don't want to like train you like hire you train you and then have you leave in three months like they want you to like stay with them like even like like they want people who are going to be with them forever because like when you're with the dentist for three years you know them so well and it makes everyone's like life a lot easier so you just kind of have to get lucky with that I okay so working where I am now we're like down one dental assistant and my, the, the main dental assistant is always telling me like, it's given like times of COVID, some people don't want to go back to work. And so I feel like you guys are looking for a job now. Maybe it's a better job. Like it's a good opportunity now, just because, I mean, there's vacancies everywhere. Um, and maybe they're more desperate. I feel like maybe they got desperate with me, but also I think I'm awesome. And I, <laughs> but yeah. Um, I think it's just, you start whenever. It also depends on the practice on how willing they are to take a younger person. Like we, we're kind of, we're still kids in a sense. So how much of a risk, even though some of y'all are teens and young adults, I still like, I view, everyone views me as a kid at the practice um, respectfully, but they're like, oh, you're so young. But um, we have a freshman in college um, who works there. I know there has been like a high schooler that's worked there one time like right when they were graduating high school she started um I started my sophomore year and I only worked I told him I was only going to work the summer it was two months summer and then I got a text one day and they're like you did really well and I was like oh thanks they're like come back whenever you have break so I'll work sometimes only two weeks during the middle of the school year but then I like will work all summer and, or I'll work part-time so it really is just your relationship with your dentist and what dentist you work out and their preferences okay thank you so then the next um track question um is how long did you all shadow before you became dental assistants? I shadowed a little bit my senior year of high school, nothing like major, but I did um, a lot of shadowing my freshman year and then some my sophomore year, but then COVID happened. So I really didn't get anything the summer between my sophomore and junior year, just because no, no one would let me come in. Um, so basically it was my freshman and sophomore year. Now that everything is kind of opening up, um, it's getting better. So like I was able to shadow some back home since I can't work in North Carolina since I'm not certified. Um, so I was shadowing here um, at my general dentist. So that was really nice. But honestly, just the most as much exposure as you can get, that's like a good amount. So like, like I said, I shadowed freshman year and then pretty much like, I guess, half of my sophomore year. So um, yeah, I also shadowed a little bit in high school. Um, and then I shadowed a little bit before my sophomore year a little bit during COVID, not really, just like a few hours here and there. And then I just started assisting at the beginning of junior year. Um, to be honest, like shadowing is great and like definitely shadow like wherever you can. Cause like you'll learn like so many things from different practices, but like the most I learned about dentistry was just like through assisting. Cause like, like you really, there's only so much you can see like, um, like standing like far away and like not being in the patient's mouth, but yeah. Yeah, I was really late to the game. I was gonna shadow junior year, but that didn't happen because of COVID. So the first day I shadowed, I only shadowed for one day and then I became a dental assistant the next day, but 
Um, yeah, given my like two day experience, I would definitely say that dental assistant definitely gives you a hand up. Um, I know the dent or the dentist that I like the associate dentist that I work for. Um, he, when I first got hired, he was like, this is such a great thing. Like, this is really going to prepare you for dental school if you like get in and stuff, because I mean, you're learning hands-on about dentistry. And I do, I remember like, this is kind of off topic, but I was like stalking some dental student from UMish. It was like a vlog they got, she's like a dental student blogger. And one of her blogs was like, she posted a picture of her dental assisting. And she was like, oh my God, like I had dental assist for the first time and I'm a D2, I'm so excited. Like I learned about curing light and stuff, you know, for fillings. And I was like sitting there, I was like, oh my God, I'm not even in, in dental school. Um, I, and, I'm, and I'm already experiencing these things. So definitely try to get um, a hands-on experience. I would say that shadowing, shadowing was my priority. I just happened to, get a job as a dental assistant. I know that dental assisting isn't a requirement for all schools. I don't think it's a requirement for, for, for most schools. Um, yeah, shadowing is definitely more um, re like required, but yeah. So for like my job, I didn't need a shadow. So um, most of the time you don't need a shadow prior to working as a dental assistant. But I did shadow for things that I couldn't be a dental assistant or it was short term. So I was really privileged to have a super cool opportunity to shadow in Europe. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be there long term. So I have family in Europe and both all my family is basically in dentistry, which got me passionate for dentistry. But one of my family members does emergency dentistry. So, for example, if in like with jaws. So if you're in a motorcycle accident and your whole face is kind of gone, he works on repairing that and making you look normal. So it works with plastics and dentistry. So it was really cool. I got to go into um, the emergency room and watch the trauma and the rebuilding of jaws and the teeth. And it was a cool experience. And then I worked with a general dentist in Europe too, just to see how their technology is different. And it's as, like super weird to see how we do things like different. Like I will be going there to get my wisdom teeth done because you don't have to go under. It's a super easy procedure for them. And it doesn't really like leave any effect for, so you can like go and do normal things two days later. So it's really cool to see how other countries do things. Awesome. Um, I know this doesn't apply to everyone, but one last thing to wrap it up. For those of you who are applying, uh, do you think assisting has helped you in applying to schools or do you feel more prepared as you prepare for dental school? I definitely feel more prepared as I'm going into dental school because you definitely have that hands-on experience that not everyone has. So just like even just knowing how to like work the suction, like Nitty said, the high power or the high volume suction, it can be a lot to handle your first time. So just like knowing that um, right off the bat, that's like kind of a, you know, you go in feeling a little bit more confident, which is nice. So I definitely have um, liked working there. I like working with everything hands-on and just like getting to, it's one thing where you stand like in the room in shadow, but like, like I said, being able to work hands-on is just a lot better opportunity and it helps you remember things more. So I've really enjoyed it. I agree it definitely did help me but like with that being said like don't get discouraged if you don't find a dental assisting job because like like I don't want to say you probably won't but like we're definitely in the minority it's really hard and um usually in most dental schools like the first two years you assess you assist the upperclassmen so like you'll get your experience eventually but like if you can it's definitely a great experience but if you can't that's okay that's a hundred percent normal that's most people like aren't able to find a job unless they're lucky like all of us are. Yeah, I 100% agree. I mean, I hope this isn't making anyone nervous because when we say like, it's interesting because when we say we're getting hands-on experience, we're getting hands-on experience to an extent. I mean, like, I feel like what we do is kind of D1, D2. Not like I would completely know that, but because I'm not a dental student, but I mean, it's not like we're actually drilling teeth and like, you know, I mean, that's like, that we're not we're not actually dental students we're just doing things that would us would probably like make us I like would prepare us for dental school I mean like I remember the dental or the dentist that I was working for when he when I first like started working there he was like you're gonna learn like you're gonna have to count all the teeth numbers and learn all the surfaces and all the instruments and like d1 or something so yeah I don't think we're I don't think dental assistants necessarily like 
going to make you like a superhuman in dental school, but I think it'll definitely just prepare you to what you'll probably be seeing in the future. Um, so I kind of have a different viewpoint, um, not to be like kind of harsh or anything, but um, I've talked to a few people for like um, admissions through the my college, because um, I'm applying to my college. I go to East Carolina University. I don't think I've, we didn't really introduce ourselves, but um, I go to East Carolina University in North Carolina. We have a dental school that I am applying for. And I was talking to just people who kind of work with the admission board and they said, your GPA and your test score can speak for like speak for you, but like let's say you have a ton of experience being a dental assistant, they're gonna really look at that. Um, and I've collected like over hundreds of hours, and so they really will look at that and understand that I'm learning a lot from that, and I'm gonna have some knowledge that other students won't have. But again, if you're doing amazing academically, they'll also view that. So it's just what you need in your application and if it's gonna make you stand out more, then that's great. Cause there's so many people that apply for dental school. It's, as we know, it's competitive. So having um, things that will make you stand out really help. Awesome. Well, I believe that is all we had. If you guys have any more questions, um, feel free to unmute yourself and just shout it out. But if not, thank you for everyone who attended and thank you so much to our speakers. You guys are phenomenal. And yeah, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us through the Students of Dentistry Instagram um, or the Pit Vaud Dental Instagram. Thanks everyone for coming. We'll stick around if anyone has any questions. Thank you.